Abortion. It's one of the most contentious and pressing issues of our time. Today I'll be addressing this topic, and specifically, responding to a video by the channel ASAP Science. I've chosen to respond to this video for a couple reasons. Firstly, it's essentially pro-choice propaganda, and I think there's a lot that you, the viewer, can learn from hearing it rebutted. Secondly, it's one of the first results you see when you search abortion on YouTube, and it has over 6 million views. The top videos when you searched abortion used to be the pro-life group Live Action, until a feminist journalist complained to YouTube about it in 2018 and the videos were artificially deranked. And finally, the channel ASAP Science has nearly 10 million subscribers. Further research into its background shows that it's hosted by two openly homosexual men named Mitchell Moffat and Gregory Brown from Canada. The channel's been promoted by the likes of CBS News and Bill Nye, so a high-profile channel like this putting out propaganda is certainly worthy of a response. With abortion being very important in the national conversation right now, it's imperative that the full truth is told. So with that all said, let's get into it. 56 million abortions occur annually worldwide, and though opinions on the matter are strong, many are simply unaware of how they actually work. So regardless of whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, what actually happens during an abortion? First thing to note here, notice how the video begins by attempting to portray itself as a neutral source or an uninvolved observer. They act as if they'll be correcting misconceptions on both the pro-life and pro-choice sides, but the video will go on to be essentially pro-choice talking points. The video description is a bit more direct about where the video creators stand. It states this, Alabama is making a mistake with rolling back abortion rights. Find out why with real science. So despite their attempt at trickery here, not only is the video not neutral, but it's also directly partisan against politicians in states like Alabama. Now let's listen to where the video goes from here. Abortion procedures range from taking a pill to surgical options, often based on availability or how far along a pregnancy is, and 92% of legal US abortions take place within the first 13 weeks of gestation. Now, they point out this percentage for a reason. First of all, it is correct, but what they're attempting to do is downplay the number of abortions that take place after 13 weeks gestation, or the first trimester. This is because surveys show the majority of the public is against abortions being legal after this first trimester. This isn't surprising since by 14 weeks, unborn babies clearly resemble human children, complete with all of their appendages. By stressing how 92% of abortions are performed in the first trimester, ASAP Science hopes viewers might think there aren't many abortions in the second or third trimester at all. But here's the problem. Because there are around 640,000 abortions in the United States every year, that remaining 8% equates to over 50,000 abortions. If you're like the majority of the public and think that unborn babies deserve to be protected after the first trimester, 50,000 of them dying every year is a serious problem. This is precisely why they're using percentages here and not numbers. In any case, let's continue. Vacuum aspiration is a surgical procedure usually used up to 16 weeks after conception. The cervix is numbed and opened wide enough to pass a slender tube into the uterus where suction is used to empty the contents. Notice how they refer to the unborn baby's body as contents. They actually can't even bring themselves to describe in detail what they're doing because they know it would disturb a huge portion of their audience. And if you have any doubt that this is the case, don't worry because they do it again immediately after. Within the same timeline, a DNC or dilation and curatage abortion can be used. First, the cervix is dilated using small instruments or medication, and then a curette is used to remove the contents of the uterus. There they go using the word contents again because they know how bad describing the actual procedure in detail would make them look. I think it speaks volumes about the horrors of abortion that even its proponents don't want to describe what it actually entails. I'd show you pictures myself, but I'm not even sure if they're allowed on YouTube. A simple internet search of aborted fetuses should do the trick, though. If a pregnancy is between 12 to 24 weeks, a D&E or dilation and evacuation abortion is likely used, although only 1.2% of abortions occur after 21 weeks. Again, they're trying to downplay the numbers here, but that 1.2% is 1.2% of 640,000 abortions every year which equates to 7,680 abortions after 21 weeks every year in the United States. And since they mentioned 21 weeks, here's what an unborn baby looks like at 21 weeks. This is what states like New York have legalized killing up until birth. Once dilated, fetal and placental tissue is removed via vacuum aspiration, forceps, and a curette. 
Fetal tissue is removed is an interesting way of saying that the baby's body is torn apart with metal tools and yanked out piece by piece. Here's how an ex-abortion doctor describes the procedure. The abortionist uses this clamp to grasp an arm or leg. Once he has a firm grip, the abortionist pulls hard in order to tear the limb from the baby's body. One by one, the rest of the limbs are removed, along with the intestines, the spine, and the heart and lungs. This is what pro-choice people say you're a bad person if you want to stop, by the way. With that in perspective, let's continue. The decision to have an abortion after 24 weeks is extremely rare and often due to severe fetal anomalies. Recent studies contradict this. Research from 2019 found that most late-term abortions are elective, done on healthy women with healthy fetuses, and for the same reasons given by women experiencing first trimester abortions. Even the Guttmacher Institute, a pro-choice research organization, found that most women getting abortions after 20 weeks were not doing so for reasons of maternal health or fetal anomalies. Furthermore, even if what ASAP Science said is true, which the evidence goes against, it says absolutely nothing as to why abortions for convenience should be legal past 20 weeks, which is what their video is arguing for. When abortions are allowed by the local law, they are one of the safest procedures in medicine with case fatality rates less than one death per 100,000 procedures. This is what's called a snuck premise. A snuck premise is a proposition someone implies without directly saying it. In this case, it's the premise that there's any kind of abortion that's quote unquote safe. A pro-lifer would argue that every abortion is unsafe for the life that's being ended. With that snuck premise in mind, let's continue. In the US, the risk of death associated with childbirth is 14 times higher in women than that of an abortion. This is an odd point. Birth being more risky does not morally justify abortion. Something being of higher risk to a person does not automatically justify killing someone else. This isn't even mentioning how giving birth is the entire reason pregnancy exists and is completely different from abortion which is unnecessary in 99% of cases. However, unsafe abortions practiced by individuals without the necessary skills or in an environment that does not conform to medical standards cause an estimated 68,000 women to die yearly while a further 5 million suffer temporary or permanent disability. The vast majority of this happens in poor countries with horrible medical systems. There's no indication that numbers anywhere close to this would be replicated in a country like the United States. This is simply a fear-mongering tactic that abortionists use. Also, look at the things they mentioned on this clipboard. Necessary skills, safe environment, and medical standards. That's interesting, because recently the pro-choice side has been pushing for laws that massively expand who can perform abortions. Virginia, New York, and Maine's recent abortion laws removed requirements that only physicians conduct abortions. They also remove requirements that abortion facilities meet hospital standards. Now add in the fact that the abortion industry has a habit of covering up botched abortions. What's going on here is completely clear. This big concern about the safety of the women is a smokescreen. And laws that limit a woman's access to an abortion or make abortions illegal do not reduce the number of abortions. Countries where abortions are illegal have roughly the same number of abortions. What changes instead is the incidence of unsafe abortions. A 2011 study did find that state-level anti-abortion laws in Texas correlated with lower abortion rates in the state, but these results did not account for women traveling to other states with less restrictive laws to receive a procedure. So there's a lot to respond to here. They're making a lot of claims without citations and they don't specify what researchers they're referring to. When we look at a country like Poland or Malta that ban abortion, they do indeed have lower abortion rates than countries that have it legalized. Now, a pro-choice advocate might argue abortions are still happening, just not being counted. But that involves a lot of guesswork and estimations that will never produce an accurate number. And if you can't provide definitive numbers, you shouldn't be making claims like ASAP Science did. And as for some of the poorer countries they mentioned, like Mexico and Brazil, these are obviously cherry-picked for their poor living conditions because we know that poverty is correlated with higher rates of abortion. I could just as easily point at Vietnam, where abortion is legal and taxpayer-funded, and it has one of the highest abortion rates in the entire world. It's estimated that 40% of all pregnancies there end in abortion. As for the United States, the numbers show that liberal states have far higher rates of abortion than their conservative counterparts. ASAP Science did mention how this might be able to be explained by people leaving states with strict abortion laws to go to other ones, but as it turns out, there have been studies on this, and they found that the in-state decrease in abortion from these laws far exceeds the out-of-state increase, which leads us to believe that abortions are being reduced, not just being done elsewhere. We can also look at U.S. history to see that liberalizing abortion law increases abortions. 
In the first full calendar year after Roe v. Wade, the U.S. abortion rate went up from 13.2 abortions per 1,000 women of childbearing age to 19.3. In the next several years, public support for legal abortion increased and more abortion facilities were opened. Between 1974 and 1980, the U.S. abortion rate went from 19.3 to 29.3, an increase of about 52%. Clearly, the Roe v. Wade decision dramatically increased the rate and number of abortions in the United States. Researchers have found that sex education and access to contraceptive methods do reduce the number of abortions by minimizing unwanted pregnancies. This can be seen in the abortion rates decreasing significantly in the developed world since 1990. There's no way you can attribute this drop simply to the two points they mentioned. Firstly, we need to debunk this point about sex education. You'll often hear progressives say that comprehensive sex education will reduce abortions. Well, let's examine that. Of the 10 states in the United States with the lowest abortion rates, 9 of 10 either don't require sex education at all or have a curriculum in which abstinence must be stressed. Meanwhile, looking at the states with the highest abortion rates, 8 of 10 are reliably Democrat. This includes the progressive quote-unquote bastion, the District of Columbia. I think what this proves is that areas that emphasize sexual morality will have less abortion than areas that do not. As I've mentioned in previous videos, women who have more non-marital sexual partners have been proven to get more abortions. In general, leftist support of meaningless sex makes the idea that their policies reduce abortions absolutely laughable. As for birth control, I will agree that that's a factor in the drop, though I don't think it's necessary for a drop. The drop in the abortion rate over the years can also be attributed to crisis pregnancy centers, public funding restrictions on abortion, parental involvement laws, and informed consent laws, all things pushed by pro-life advocates. So with all that said, let's get to the last part of the video. Ultimately, access to legal abortions make women's lives safer and healthier. Needless to say, I do not think that is true. The abortion industry in the United States is no friend of women, despite its desperate attempts to seem like it is. It's an industry for profit and political power. Nothing exemplifies this better than Planned Parenthood. The organization makes hundreds of millions every year from political funds. Companies have also admitted guilt in receiving and selling aborted fetal body parts procured from Planned Parenthood. It ain't about women, guys. What they do is so heinous that a lot of the public doesn't even believe it. But their sworn statements and research collected by groups like the Center for Medical Progress prove they do indeed do these things. And with that, ASAP Science's video ends. It goes without saying at this point that their video had very little to do with actual science. These were abortionist talking points, plain and simple. Now I'm not sure about ASAP Science's credentials as scientists, but they need to stop twisting science to create pro-choice propaganda. The reason channels make videos like this is to muddy the waters and make the public hesitate to actually act on abortion. If you're interested in my personal opinion on abortion, I think it should be heavily restricted or outright banned, with perhaps a few exceptions in extreme cases. I'm one of many who thinks that unborn children should have their lives respected and protected. So there you have it guys, I hope this was informative and you were able to learn something new. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And please let me know your thoughts on abortion in the comments. Also, if you have suggestions for videos you'd like to see me respond to in the future, comment them as well. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.